This tutorial is on key commands in Cubase 4. Key commands is what Cubase refers to keyboard shortcuts as, and keyboard shortcuts are an excellent way to dramatically improve your efficiency and speed when it comes to writing music. Cubase is a fairly complex and powerful program, and it has a lot of different menus and functions. And a lot of these functions are buried down in the menu, sometimes two and three clicks away, and that can clog up and slow down your workflow, especially when you have a lot of inspiration and you want to get an idea out of your head and into the computer quickly. Clicking through menus is one of the most frustrating and cumbersome things. And keyboard shortcuts are your way to be able to break through that barrier. It's your tool that you can use to really become as quick as you want to in the program. Thankfully, Cubase makes setting up key commands very easy. And it's got a really powerful function to be able to do that. So Let's take an example. At the beginning of a project, I'm typically adding a lot of audio files. Normally to import an audio file, you have to click on the file menu, import, and select audio file. And that'll bring up your context menu to select what file you want to import. That's a drag. That's the slow way to do it. Now, I'm gonna take that function and I'm gonna show you how to apply a key command or keyboard shortcut to it. So we click on our file menu, we go down and select key commands. And that'll bring up this window here. Pretty much all the functions in Cubase that can have a key command assigned to them are listed here, and you can find them all by expanding or collapsing these little folders. The quick way to do it is to type in the command that you're looking for. In this case, I'm searching for import audio. Hit return, and as you can see, it brings it up right away. So if it already has a key command assigned to it, you'll see it right here. And as you can see, some of these functions already do have key commands assigned to them. Cubase is set up with key commands by default, but a lot of times they're either inconvenient or you'll just want to set up your own or you'll want to be adding one to one that doesn't have one. So we're going to leave our audio file, import audio file selected. We're going to click in this field right here, and I'm going to assign command I. Type that in, and then I click assign. As you can see, it's assigned command I. You can see it down here and then we click OK. Now we're going to make sure our audio track is selected and we're going to hit Command I. As you can see, it brings up our context menu to be able to select an audio file and import it. That's a lot faster than going through our file menu, selecting Import and Audio File. Now, once you set up your key commands file, it's going to be something that you're going to want to save. So how you do that is you open up your key commands dialog again, and you can see under presets here, you have the ability to click on this little store icon and save your file. So if you click on that, you're able to type in a name. So let's say Vespers key commands. And we're gonna click okay, and okay again. Now, if you're ever reformatting your hard drive, reinstalling, or if you're switching to another computer, you're going to want to take that file with you as opposed to rebuilding it from scratch on a new machine. So it's a little bit tough to find and I'm going to show you where to be able to grab that on a Macintosh computer running OS X. So we're going to go to our finder and you go to your user folder and you select the library. Once you're in library you're going to want to go down to Preferences. In Preferences, you should see a folder called Cubase 4. And then you can select Presets. And in Presets, you'll see Key Commands. And in Key Commands, you'll see the one we just created, which is called Vespers Custom Key Commands.xml. And that's the file that you want to take with you and load into this same directory on Cubase after you've reformatted your hard drive or on the new computer that you're setting up. I'm going to show you one more thing before we finish up, and that's if you want to delete a keyboard shortcut or a key command. It's quite easy to do as well. So we're going to go back to our import audio file. Let's say I want to get rid of that key command. You simply select the key command, and you click Delete Selected Key Command and Remove. And that's how you manage key commands in Cubase 4. I would suggest that you set up your own custom file 
And anytime you're doing something more than a couple of times a session, keep track of what you're doing and what kinds of things you're spending your time finding in the menus. And at the end of your session, working on your project, just take a few minutes to be able to program those in and constantly build your key commands file. And eventually you'll be able to do a lot of functions. You'll rely less on the mouse and surfing through menus and you'll be able to be much more quick without ever having your hands leave the keyboard. And that's really one of the keys to becoming really fast and really efficient, spending more of your time writing music and less of your time browsing through menus.